When working with PCG in Unreal, it's not that uncommon to need to pipe data from a blueprint into a PCG graph and then from the PCG graph into a material. But the process for that isn't entirely intuitive. So I've together a brief demonstration here where we gather some data and a blueprint. We pass it into a PCG graph and then onto a material. So what this is doing is it's creating a points grid and the extent of the points grid is controllable from the blueprint. And the resulting points will have a linear gradient from the bottom to the top going from zero to one for the color. So we can change the size of the grid if we want. And we can change the location. And our gradient will update accordingly. So let's take a look at how to set this up. First thing you got to do is make sure you've got the procedural content generation plugin enabled. So that's going to be this one right here. You may need to do a restart. We're going to create a blueprint of class actor. Call it BP PCG demo. We're going to create a PCG graph. We're going to create a material. And then right click on the material and create a material instance. And we'll go ahead and save all this stuff. Let's go ahead and open up the blueprint. So here in the component section, we want to add a PCG component, compile and save. And we can take our PCG demo graph, drop it in right there. Once again, we'll do a compile and save. Going to drag an instance of our blueprint into the world here. And we'll just scoot it off someplace like that. And I'm going to open up the PCG demo. We're going to create a points grid. And if I tap the D key, you can see here at the origin, we have a grid of points. I'm going to make the extents in Z500 so we get a cube here. And then I'm going to pull off and type in transform points. And I'm going to scale them down a little bit to 0.2 across the board. Go ahead and enable the debug on this node. And we can see now that they are spaced out a little bit better. If I move the blueprint actor itself, they will appear to update, but then they snap back to the origin. So what we need to do is we need to copy the actor data onto the points. So we're going to do a get actor data node. We need to go to the mode here and set it to get single point. And then we're going to add a copy points node and pipe this in to the target. Turn off debug on transform points and turn it on the copy points. And you can see now as I move the BP PCG demo around, the points will follow it. So to get this to work, we're going to need to transfer some data from the blueprint into the PCG graph. So to begin, I'm going to add a variable here in the blueprint. We're going to call this one extents. We're going to make its data type a float, which is a decimal point number, and we're going to turn on the I here so that it can be seen by the PCG demo graph. We'll do a compile and a save. We need to make sure that uh, we use the exact same uh, spelling. So we're going to use a get actor property node. And for the property name, it's going to be extents. And then if we want to refer to it here in the graph, we'll just give it the same name there. And I'm going to scoot this over a bit, rearrange things. We're going to extend our create points grid, and we're going to pipe this into the grid extents. We can go ahead and save it. I forgot to add a default value here to extents, so we'll just, it defaults to 500. I just forgot to change it. So now what I can do is down here in my actor data with the, uh, the BP PCG demo selected, I've got this new variable, and if I change it, you can see the grid is going to get bigger and smaller. So what we're doing is we're taking actor data from our blueprint and we're passing it into our PCG demo. The next thing that we're going to want to get is the location 
of our blueprint. And then we're going to need to get the point, the, the point location in terms of its Z value. Because what we're doing is we're going to create a linear gradient between the top and the bottom, where the bottom is zero and the top is one. So we need to know the current position, the range, and the location of the blueprint. So let's go get the location. We're going to add another variable. Let's call this one BP location. I'm going to leave it as a float. We can go to the construction script. This will be executed every time this thing gets moved or there's any kind of change. And what we're going to do is I'm going to right click and type in the word self. We will get a reference to self. We want to do get actor location. This is going to return a vector. That's what the little yellow thing means there. And we only need the Z component. So I will type in break. I'm going to drag in my BP location variable. We'll select set here. Pull it up. We'll connect the execution pin there and then plug in our Z value. So if I hit compile and save, there's no need to set a default value here. Here is our BP location. You can see it says 474. If I move it up, we're looking at 906, and that reflects what's in our location Z value there. So now we're ready to package this data up in a way that we can transfer it to the material. I'm going to create a copy attributes node. And for now, I'm just going to duplicate our get actor property extents node. For the input source, that'll be extents. Again, I'm pretty sure that's got to match this here, the uh, output attribute name. And then what do we want to call it? Extents is fine. So now if I come over and I tap the A key, and I expand this a little bit, if we scroll all the way over here, at the end, we now have a new column here in our metadata which is that extents value. And if we come over and look at the extents value in our blueprint, that's being passed through. So if I change it here, you can see that'll update. The next thing we want to do is we're just going to basically copy this. And this one we're going to change to BP location. And then BP location. And now we should see that added here as well, matching our Z location. And then finally, we need to get the actual point location in terms of its Z value. Let's add another copy attributes node here. I'm going to plug from the out into the target and the source. We'll come over here. We're going to select position. And then we really only want the Z component. So we'll say dot Z it needs to be a lowercase C. And then I'm just going to call this one pause Z and we'll hit save, confirm we've got our updated metadata. It'll help if we're looking at the right node. And there we go. And if we scroll down, you can see those values are going to jump up depending on what row they happen to be on. All right, cool. Now we're ready to add our uh, static mesh spawner. So I'm plug it in like this. I'm going to create a sphere. Go to modeling mode. We'll make a sphere. I'm going to set to the current folder if it's already there. And then you can set the subdivisions to 8. We don't need this to be super high res. And there we go. Let's give it a rename. We can open it up. And we'll just go ahead and assign our material instance in there like this. Turn on Nanite. Why not? And then we want to come over to our static mesh spawner node, look for mesh entries, add one, and then expand this a couple times so you get the descriptor and you'll see static mesh. And we'll just go ahead and drag our static mesh in there. We can turn off debug wherever it is, because now we've got our little points grid here. And we're spawning spheres so we can see what, what's going on. All right. Back to the static mesh spawner, there's one more thing we need to do, which is this instance data packer area. 
We're going to grab this little drop down here and select PCG Instance Data Packer by Attribute. And then we're going to add three things here to our attribute selectors. One, two, and three. And the first one is going to be extents, then BP location, and pause Z. And the actual order here doesn't make any difference. You just have to remember how you set it up because we're going to reference these by index in the material. And then finally, pause Z. And once we enter those correctly, we can see the error will go away. So before we jump into the material, I just want to show you quickly what we've got set up here. We have the location of the blueprint, we have the extents of our grid, and we have the location in Z of our point, right? So this is going to be the location of the blueprint, this is the extents, and then this is some random location. So what we want to do is we want to basically find if this is one and this is zero, what is this value going to be? Let's go ahead and open up our material. I'm going to type in custom and what we want is this per instance custom data and the index here the data index is going to correspond with this right here so the first thing would be the extents then we've got the whoops looks like i missed a letter there oh that's in there and then pause z so we're going to go from zero one to two so the first thing will be the extents you can just add a little descriptor here if you want we can go ahead and copy this. We'll set the index to one, and that's gonna be BP location. What you call this thing doesn't make any difference at this point. It's just housekeeping. And then we'll copy this again. We'll set the data index to two. And we'll call this pause Z. So this is going to be evaluated individually for every single sphere because it's going to be this per instance value. So we're going to need to change the range value here. So we're going to get this remap value range. I'm going to right click and create a constant. And then we can just duplicate that. So the first one, the value will be zero. And the second one, the value will be one. So zero gets plugged into target low and one gets plugged into target high. We've got our pause Z for the input. And then for input low, what we're gonna do is we're going to use a subtract node. And we will subtract the extents value from the Location in Z, that is our input low. And then we're going to add an add node here. And this will give us our input high. We can go ahead and save it. Oops, forgot to plug it in there. Let's clean this up a little bit. And uh, not super easy to see with the lighting on, but if I turn over to unlit mode, you can see we're getting that gradient. And with the blueprint selected now, if I wanna make the extents a little bit bigger, we should get, oh, that was pretty big. Go ahead and hide this thing here. We should get a much better gradient there from top to bottom. That may actually be even too big to see what's going on. We'll set it to a thousand. If we deselect, we can see we're getting a lovely gradient from top to bottom based on the position of our point relative to the blueprint and the extents. And if I change the location of the blueprint, we're still getting that same lovely gradient there. So I'm using this technique all over the place in this project, but one of the spots that might be easiest to understand, we're not getting too into the weeds here, is this whole exterior surface is made up of little tiny planes that are sourced from sampling a polygon mesh. And for each point, 
I generate a latitude and a longitude that I can then use as UV offsets in the material. So for, for any one of these points, let me just go ahead and find the mesh here. It's a little tiny piece of geometry. And if we hop over to the UVs, it's hard to see, but there's a little tiny dot there. It's not compressed to zero. It's actually a square. I can't, I don't think I can zoom on the UVs here. But anyway, you get the idea. It's a little tiny square. And what I want to do is I want to offset it in U and in V based on where it lives here on the sphere. So here is the spot in the PCG graph where that happens. I'm using an HLSL node, which is super useful. I'm not going to get too deep into the weeds on this and this one, but uh, using a fairly simple equation for longitude and for latitude, I can create a normalized value where I'm getting zero to one from top to bottom and zero to one around. And then I can pass that data along to the material here, U chord and V chord, so that when I spawn those sweet little planes, which is happening right over here, in the attribute selectors, I just pass that U chord and V chord data. And then in the material, I can get it right here. So we start off with whatever the texture coordinates are by default. I use component masks to get the RNG uh, individually. I add the offsets. And then I've got some other stuff in here, tiling parameters and horizontal offsets. Anyway, put all that stuff together, recombine, and those are my UVs, which I can plug into the texture and I get this fairly convincing result. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this to be useful and hopefully in the near future, I'll be releasing another tutorial that goes a little bit more in depth on the HLSL stuff. So keep an eye out for that.